Orlando, Florida, and our continuing coverage of the NCAA tournament. Now on TNT, and we're all set for the NC State Wolfpack coming out of the first four and date on Tuesday against the five seed, the Pelicans of St. Louis. And the winner of this game will match up against the winner of the Louisville-Manhattan game, which will be coming up as soon as this one is over right here on TNT. Hi, everybody. Brian Anderson along with Dan Bonner. Christine Leahy will join us in a moment. This figures to be a great matchup, and Dan, some star power with conference players of the year matching up in this one. You're right. For North Carolina State, it's T.J. Warren, the Atlantic Coast Conference Player of the Year, and Jordan Air Jack, the Atlantic 10 Conference Player of the Year. Both dynamic players in different ways. This ought to be fun. You see the starting five for each team. Kyle Washington, T.J. Warren, Vandenberg, Lewis, and Rawson, and then the five seniors for St. Louis. How rare is that? Only Mercer, the only other team of the tournament with five seniors in their starting lineup. Ready to tip it here in Orlando. Great to have you with us And this 12-5 matchup. Our referees, Doug Simmons, Final Four last year, Patrick Driscoll, and Bill X. Mike McCall is the point guard for St. Louis. Jordan Jett, the conference player of the year. And Lowell will take a shot from outside. The big man steps out, knocks down the triple to get us going. Now Lowell has had a tough year shooting the three. He's under 30%, but he's a guy throughout his career who's been a very effective three-point shooter, particularly when he has that much time. St. Louis put together one of the longest winning streaks in the country this year. They won 19 straight. They set a program record at one point. 12-0 in the A-10, but damn, they kind of limped in after winning the regular season. St. Louis uh, falling on hard times under Jim Cruz toward the end, but as he put it, we're in the tournament. We are a 5C. There's not much to complain about at this point. <laughs> no, he's got nothing to complain about. His team turned it over a little more, maybe, than they, turned it over a little more, maybe, than they did earlier in the season. And that sort of hurts your defense when you turn it over and allows the other guys to go out and play in transition. He's going take a little bit better care of the basketball. Here's Lowe again for three. How about two for two to get us started? And that'll help. Again, this is a guy who shoots under 30% on the season from beyond the three point arc, but now he's knocked down two. That'll stretch out that North Carolina State defense. Here's Lewis, talented point guard who makes it all go for NC State Band. Looking at the East region. Bounds play for NC State. 11.25 remaining in regulation here, and Mark Gottfried's Wolfpack leading by 12. This is uncharted territory for St. Louis. Their largest deficit of the season was 15. That was uh, to Wisconsin and against VCU. They lost both of those games. Shot clock down to three. Barber. At the end of the clock, loses the handle, and it's out of bounds on Barber. A turnover for NC State. Well, you can see that Barber is a guy who really has to have the ball in his hands, and he's just really struggling right here. And nice defense by Barnett to reach in. But, you know, when you're trying to drive the ball to the basket with that little time left on the clock, your options are really limited. Now, if you're trying to drive the ball to the basket with a lot of time left on the clock, and you've got the talent of Jordan Jet, more options are available to you. He, he's definitely hobbled a little bit there. You can just tell by his gait as he's running back. He's protecting. Might not be said that way, but he does not have his normal quickness. There's Lee for three. Boy, that's a big shot. You just have the impression that maybe St. Louis was about to make a run, and Lee is not a great three-point shooter. Only 26% on the season. And it's North Carolina State is not a team that relies heavily on the three. They score more points on two-pointers than anybody else in the country. McCall fights Barnett, dumps it in the low. And here's McCall stepping in for a three. Yes! Mike McCall. That'll help the cause for St. Louis. Brings it within 10. Remember St. Louis went on that 7-0 run at the end of the first half. They're looking for a run here as we hit the 10-minute mark in regulation. That run was key by their defense, and this is a team noted for its defense, and so they've got to pick it up. And Barnett fouls Ralston Turner, and he'll get three free throws. Barnett just scrambling to get back on D. And Barnett really bailed him out right there. This is a very tough shot by Turner. Barnett trying to put some pressure on, but 
He hit him right on the arm. That's an easy call for the official. And you try to get back in front, but you don't stick your left arm out there. If you're going to stick an arm up in the air to try to bother the shot, you do the arm furthest away from the player, and that's his right arm. Now check it on TBS, UConn and St. Joe's. They're coming down to the wire. And a potential upset there as well. St. Joe's just taking the lead over UConn. Upsets already. I think that's an indication, Brian, of just how even a lot of these teams are. There just isn't that much difference between a 5 and a 12 seed or a 7 and a 10 seed, sir. All three go down for Ralston Turner. And Turner will head to the bench. High fives for him. T.J. Warren is back in, and now NC State with a 13-point lead brings back the ACC Player of the Year. Uh, Turner once again, as he did on Tuesday night, really providing some firepower for North Carolina State, taking some of the pressure off T.J. Warren. And he went from low, take the big, and low finishes it up. Passing in the interior for St. Louis. And that's what St. Louis needs to do. They tighten it up on the defensive end. They still have plenty of time in this game. They can attack North Carolina State inside. They don't have to settle for the perimeter jumper. First base, first base basket. A long while for Rob Lowe. He had three three-pointers early in the first half. And his first base basket since is now 11. Desmond Lee went off a big three-pointer base. Finds Warren. Defense by Barnett. Here's Lee for three now. And he knocks another one down. Desmond Lee adds to NC State's lead. He had only made 19 three-point baskets in 35 games coming in. He's got two in the last three minutes. That's in a 14-point lead for State. And another turnover. Barnett trying to stuff it in. You just don't need to be that impatient. You still have time. But you're running out if you keep throwing the ball away. NC State with four big wins in March, that four-game winning streak. We're on the road, beat Kent, who we saw just destroy Colorado earlier today. Pitt here in Orlando, ready to take on the top seed, Florida, on Saturday. This is just too much dribbling. The Barber, this fire is Warren, and Warren up and under, and Warren. Well, maybe that's the way he's going to get the ball to Warren. He dribbles the ball around, shoots it, Warren goes and gets it off the board. <laughs> Largest deficit of the season. For St. Louis, Warren has 17. There's Jordan Jet. Obviously, you're not going to come into the lead by trading baskets or trading points with North Carolina State. You're going to get stops if you're the Billikens. Evans ready to check in, the senior. DJ Warren. the basket. That is a tremendous play by Jeff. Jeff is fourth in program history at St. Louis University in steals. Comes away with one there to make it a 12-point deficit. There's another steal. And McCall will take it all the way. And McCall with the layup. And it's a 10-point game. That's the only North Carolina State offense has gotten very stagnant. Mark Gottfried wants a timeout. 55-45, NC State, the 12 seed. Desmond Lee knocking a couple of triples down. But Jordan Jet turning defense into offense. That's been the formula for St. Louis. Aerial coverage provided by Direct TV. Don't just watch TV, Direct TV. Third game of our quadruple header today. We've moved into the Midwest region. A reminder that Coke Zero wants to know, are you a real fan? Hashtag prove it. Visit the Coke Zero social arena in March Madness Live. 
NC State, the 12th seed, coming off a win at the first four in Dayton on Tuesday. They beat Xavier. And, uh, flew that night, arrived here to Orlando about four in the morning. Uh, the practice yesterday, full workout prepping for St. Louis, and they've got a 10-point lead. Turner cannot add to it. Jim pulls down the board. We'll see if St. Louis has a run in them. Currently on a 6-0 run. It's a 16-point deficit. Here's McCall for three. Comes up short. Jim Cruz thought he stepped out of bounds. He's was getting plenty of help over there, Pat Driscoll, but he saw it the whole time. Pass the handle for Barber. Looks like Jeff got a piece of him as well. And it'll be Jordan and Jeff on the hat. Another timeout on the floor. Ten points, state lead. They'll have the basketball. In Division I in the last four years, BA. All right, thanks, EJ. In the second overtime game in this tournament, as Tennessee took down Iowa, there's the bracket we're looking at. St. Joe's trying to advance. And a matchup potentially with Villanova. They'll match up against Milwaukee a little bit later on TBS. Right here in Orlando, NC State by 10 with the ball. Lewis is back in running the point for the Wolfpack. And it's Evans who is guarding TJ Warren right now, trying to deny him, but he's got the ball here, dumps it down to Leonard Freeman. Now Warren. Shot clock at five. Lewis goes to the hole, and Lewis, acrobatic shot, it goes! Tyler Lewis makes it a 12-point state lead. And I think that was a big shot by Tyler Lewis. You can just feel the Billikens building some momentum. And there's another turnover, a steal by State. Here is Warren, a foul, it goes! A chance in three for T.J. Warren. DJ Warren, that's a big play, but this is an even bigger play. Tyler Lewis driving the ball to the basket, and you play him for the pass, and that's what St. Louis did, but he converted. And DJ Warren, when he gets out in transition, he is impossible to guard. One shot, Warren. Just a crusher for St. Louis to work that hard defensively and have the ball end up in Lewis's hands as Warren misses the free throw. Now he's one for five tonight. NC State overall from the line, 7 for 11. St. Louis has shot it poorly from the line as well, 3 for 10. I think the only guy for NC State is Mr. Pizzo. <laughs> he gets there a lot. Up and inside to Evans, and Evans with the layup. Back to a 12-point deficit. That's Dwayne Evans, St. Louis' top scorer. These five seniors for SLU, they're down 12. Take a look at our USAA second half game summary. NC State leads it by 12 with 4.41 remaining in regulation. T.J. Warren, 19 points. One of the most prolific scorers in the country. Five of those six St. Louis three-pointers coming in the first half. Now the Billikens, they're trying to apply some pressure. Almost a steal by Barnett. Warren ends up with it. Go back it out. Check the bar up above. Just ended on CBS Michigan. Defeating Walker and Michigan, the two seed, will advance. We'll get the winner, Texas and Arizona State. Part of the Midwest region, which is where we are here in Orlando for this part of the bracket. Lewis misfires on the jumper. St. Louis, they need a run. Chet, he'll take it. Comes up short. He gets his own. Join Eric Chet with the left. Jordan Jet up strong against Jordan Vandenberg. It's a big bucket for the Billikens. There's a timeout. Mark Gottfried has got the timeout with 26 on the play clock. Just in time. Complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. Orlando and this part of the Midwest bracket. Winners uh, who advance to the Sweet 16 will end up in Indianapolis. Top seed in this region is Wichita State as 
Almost a turnover for NC State, and now Turner will wisely back it up. They'll run some clock. Three and a half remaining in regulation. They don't have much clock to run. There's only 10 seconds left in the shot clock. Lewis to Turner. Got to go here. Five. Down to three, and it's T.J. Warren. And Vandenberg just clears the deck. And he'll get the foul as he pushed Barnett out of the way. We'll see if St. Louis has one more run in them. The five seed in trouble against NC State. Manhattan. Louisville or Manhattan. Jake Barnett will shoot free throws for St. Louis. And that is something St. Louis has not done very well tonight. Now a four of 11. Now out of bounds on the NC State ball. The free throw story has been costly. It's some turnovers. Jim Cruz and Billikens as well. Full court pressure and Lewis almost turned it over. I said four of them and they're now three of eleven. Jim Cruz is thinking maybe that went off Tyler Lewis. Well, that went right off the foot of Dwayne Evans. That's a good call. Yeah, NC State looks really uncomfortable against this pressure. Husband Lee trapped and a whistle. So that'll be on Jordan Jet, and to the free throw line goes Desmond Lee. Freeman gets the ball, he throws it back. You don't want to throw the ball back against pressure if you can avoid it. And they didn't really need to commit that foul. They were very near a 10-second violation, only two seconds left, and North Carolina State was going to have a hard time getting it over the half court. NC State's had a little trouble with that full court pressure. Godfrey bailed him out. With a timeout earlier, and there's a free throw made for Desmond Lee as he adds to the NC State lead. It's now 11. Lee is a 73% free throw shooter. It's not a bad strategy to foul if you don't get the steal, but you'd rather foul a free throw shooter who's not playing strong. Well, I'm maybe not right too, so not bad play. And now Warren is going to commit a foul. That free throw is coming up for St. Louis. By the way, up top, check TBS. They're at a minute 20 in overtime, and it's UConn of six on St. Joseph's. Uh, now the, the mistake North Carolina State has made, they have sent a very good free throw shooter to the line. Well, almost 77% from the line. And low misses. Boy, that's been that kind of night, but it all takes a board Jet. And Jet, and it counts! Jordan Jet takes one out of the dirt for a basket and a chance for three. The Carolina State unable to hang on to the ball, and Jordan Jet, who looked like he was struggling in the first half, but he's looked fine in the second half. And he one point at halftime. And that is a big three-point play. That takes it back to an eight-point game. And that's 13 points in this half for Jordan Jet. There's the foul story. St. Louis will be shooting two from here on out. Oh, it's dropped. Tyler Lewis walked with it. And Warren kind of bailed on him. He was ready to make that pass. Warren took off down the court. And Mark Gottfried's going to make a quick change in the point guard position. Now that is the sixth turnover tonight on Tyler Lewis. Somebody's got to come to the ball. You just can't be, you can't have your guard just trying to dribble with it. Lowe chases it down. Barber back in. And now that is basket here to make it interesting. There's Jack. He's that top player and he gives it up for Evans. Evans, no. And a foul. It's going to send the freshman Lark Freeman to the free throw line. And Evans is sick about that one. He was right there for the reverse. It rims off. And that's this is normally a play that Evans makes. This is actually right in his wheelhouse. That's where he operates most of the time. But this is not a bad foul. In fact, it's a very smart foul. And Art Freeman, only a 44% free throw shooter on the season. And this is a one-on-one. -on -one. Freeman hit his lone free throw of the night. He completed a three-point play. And he missed. So Freeman 
gives it right back. Looks just like a turnover. St. Louis ball here. The trail by eight is low. Oh my! In and out it goes. It rolled around and pops out. Man, what a tough break for Rob Lowe. Lowe hit those three early in the game, and he's got a really good look at this one. Oh, and his family up there, all the way from New Zealand. It hurts. And now Vandenberg, he's back to the free throw line. He's only a 58% free throw shooter. Double bonus the rest of the way for both teams. Boy, the free throws are going up brick like no. But they've got the, as far as the Billikens are concerned, these are the right guys going to the line for NC State. Again, the last shift coming Sunday, June 22nd on TNT. Missed them both. And again, St. Louis has life to down eight. 225 left, Jordan Jet. Another narrow miss and another foul. Evans fouls Vandenberg. Two shots coming up now. This is obviously the strategy. They're trying to, if they miss the shot, they're going to foul immediately. And Freeman is a 44% free throw shooter, as we said. He's in the game. Vandenberg, a 58% free throw shooter. He's in the game. Two shots. Vandenberg is now 0 for 3 from the free throw line tonight. Desmond Lee is in. Austin Turner will head to the bench. Lee, a 72% free throw shooter. And finally, Vandenberg gets one to go. One out of four. But just one point for NC State. The lead is nine. So now Jack is not going to score. Here's Evans for three, and Evans knocks home a big one and makes it a six-point deficit for St. Louis. Dwayne Evans, their top scorer. It's a big triple for the Billikens, and they have a rally in them tonight in Orlando. Now, even though St. Louis has five starters, those five seniors, the winningest group in St. Louis program history. The ball usually ends up in the hands of Evans or Jet in late games. See the timeout story, two apiece, double bonus the rest of the way for both clubs. Mark Godfrey has four guards and T.J. Warren in the game. And Warren is fouled immediately. And normally you would say that's a good, that's a good thing for North Carolina State, except Warren is only one for five from the line tonight. Shoots it a little over 70%. Mark Godfrey trying to counter the hack a wolf pack strategy by Jim Cruz. Everybody's game. Four fouls, by the way, on Evans. And Warren misses another free throw for NC State. This is agonizing for wolf pack fans. One for six. And NC State overall has missed five of their last six free throws. Knocks it down. One out of two. That's reported with Evans in the last time. The court was only a fifth of the season. Three possession game. NC State leads it by seven. He's trying to get him a call for Lowe or Gornett leads to the three. And that one, he had a great look, but he comes up short. Lowe set a great pick for him, and there's a foul on Warren. Well, that's one that St. Louis needed. Open three comes up well short. And the Billikens have been able to extend the game thanks to the Wolfpack's inability to make free throws, but they just can't get the ball to go in the basket. That was not a bad look. He stepped back and wasn't able to get it all the way to the rim. And the problem with this strategy where you're fouling all the time is your guys are going to start fouling out of the game. And Evans has just fouled out with 11 points. So St. Louis's top scorer is out. Will this be his final game in a St. Louis uniform, the senior from Chicago? Eleven points. Dwayne Evans can only watch now. T.J. Warren, player of the year in the ACC. It's two of seven tonight, and he misses again. Now two of eight. Talk about leaving the door open. 
precious moments for Wolfpack fans, and it's one out of two once again. Eight point NC State lead, still three possessions, got a minute 50 remaining in regulation. McCall lines it up, this fires on the three, and out of bounds on Jet, that'll be NC State ball. I beg your pardon, St. Louis will keep possession. He was pointing the officials, at the officials are going to discuss this, and I think that they're going to go over and look to see who actually touched that ball last. Again, McCall with a wide, wide open three. And that's really interesting. Did that go off Jet or Vandenberg? They called it, and keep this in mind, they called it St. Louis ball. Right. So when they go over there, they're going to have to have indisputable, indisputable evidence that is not the St. Louis ball. So it, was, it looks here like it's off the hand of Jet, but the impact of Vandenberg is what pushed the ball out of bounds. Well, that's clearly off the hand of Jet. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting call now this here. Is, this is a new rule yeah. in the NCAA this year. In the last two minutes of a game, or overtime, the last two minutes of overtime, the officials, once they make a call, are allowed to go over and look to see, uh, in an out-of-bounds situation, who touched the ball last. The ball's resting on Jet's hand. And Vandenberg did hit Jet's hand, but the last hand to touch the ball appears to be Jet. All right. And clearly the impact of Vandenberg and just the angle of the swing there is why the ball ended up in that direction. And so the call is going to be St. Louis basketball. And again, that's because the officials looked at it and they have to have indisputable evidence and they didn't, did not feel they had that. You do not go over to the monitor to make the call. You make the call and then you use the monitor to review the call. The call stands. It'll be St. Louis ball. Good shot clock here. McCall goes. McCall gets fouled. That's Lewis got him on the elbow. And free throws for Mike McCall Jr. That's a good job by McCall. You don't have to shoot the three exclusively if you're St. Louis. If you've got the open opportunity, then fine, take it. But otherwise, drive the ball to the basket. He shoots it at 76% from the free throw line. Again, they're only 3 of 11 tonight, though. There's a team. And McCall, 1 out of 2 from the line. A ton of free throws here. Down the stretch. And McCall hits one. A chance here to make it a two possession game with a made free throw. Well, the strategy has been if they do, they do not get the turnover, they're going to commit the foul. And remember, St. Louis U has the possession arrow as well on the jump ball. And Arbor, a whistle there, they're after it, looking for the trap, gets through it. Why don't you throw that ball backwards? And they do get it across, and there's the whistle. Going to send Desmond Lee to the line. Along Jake Barnett. Just his third. And Jim Cruz is going to send Tanner Lancona in the game. A three-point threat for St. Louis. Lee one out of two from the line tonight. A couple of big three-pointers for NC State in the second half as Lancona checks in for Glaze. One shot. Good old fashioned free throw fest. <laughs> Let's see who's going to advance to the round of 32. Keep in mind back in 1982, North Carolina State won a national championship basically because their opponents couldn't make free throws. Seems like every game in the NCAA tournament they took their opponents on the line. In fact, that's why the rule changed. There's Lancona. Oh, that's low. And low in the corner. It's a huge three for St. Louis. Time out. And it's a five-point game. Rob Lowe hit three of them in the first half and knocks down a monster triple. Double bonus the rest of the way. We've seen a lot of free throws already. St. Louis with one St. Louis has been able to crawl back in the game. That time, they, North Carolina State made the two free throws, but now they've gotten the three. Barnes drops the ball. And a turnover. It's Glaze with a layup. Randy Glaze makes.
makes it a three-point deficit for St. Louis. Why with the ball. He's trapped. He gets it to Turner. Oh, almost traveled. T.J. Warren will go to the basket. And a foul. And it goes. T.J. Warren somehow wiggled that one in. Boy, the St. Louis bench is screaming for a traveling violation. And so Turner, he never moved the pivot foot. You're allowed to establish the pivot foot. Look to me like he never moved it. He did take a step. So once you establish the pivot foot, you're allowed to step with your other foot. Wow, what a huge play. No travel call. The finish on the other end. And one for T.J. Warren. He has 23 tonight. But he's missed six foul shots in this game. And it's a six-point NC State lead. You know, we've been playing this last minute for about half an hour. Free throws every time down, feels like. 103 left. Clock runs. Here's Jordan Jack. He goes strong. And there's a foul on a block. for North Carolina State that Jeff wasn't able to get that ball to go in the basket his chance at a three-point play. He just blows right by Desmond, Desmond Lee. Ralston Turner never establishes that initial guarding position. That's very close to a three-point play opportunity. So Jeff, senior from St. Paul, two out of five from the line tonight. That's 14 points. A big second half, all of all those points. Get another missed free throw. Wow, man, this is something. So the University at Albany has Don Bassett as their free throw guru. Uh, he might want to give out his card to a couple of teams. St. Louis just 6 for 16. They've missed 10 foul shots. 1 out of 2 for Jeff. Still a 2 possession game. Lead is 5 for State. Barber is fouled by McCall. Barber is a 71% free throw here, but the numbers really haven't made any difference tonight, Brian. St. Louis, you just talked about their free throw throws. They come in as a team shooting 71%, and they have struggled across the board tonight. Barber's hit both of his free throw attempts. And he misses the first. See, now the fact that he's missed that free throw, you can, you can trade two for one, even if he makes this one. You don't necessarily have to go for the three-point shot here. You see up there on TBS, UConn wins in overtime, and they avoid the upset. St. Joe's, UConn advancing. She has Napier with 24. 19 of those coming in the second half. Mr. Both, good half. Low, the rebound, here comes Jen. It's a five-point deficit for St. Louis. And here's Barnett. And oh, Barnett lines it up. Oh. Well, now you don't have to foul. Now you just play tough game. Two-point game as Jake Barnett drops a bomb. The senior from Tosa gets a big three. And Slu is right there. For long-range triple. For Jake Barnett. Barber was fouled. On the inbounds. He'll shoot two. He just missed two. Barnett's over the foul. And then Barber hits a big free throw. And that they, they fouled there because that's the strategy that's been effective. And put these guys back on the line. Maybe they have such a mental issue that they won't be able to make them. And he only makes one or two. One or two. Not a bad strategy at <laughs> all. Got a chance to tie here with a three. St. Louis applying the foul. No, oh, and Lowe goes to the hole. A one-point game. St. Louis marching back. They trail by 16 at one point. Warren, and he's pushed out of bounds by Jake Barnett. So Barnett has fouled out. His fifth foul. Well, the issue now for St. Louis becomes if you do go to an overtime, you're running out of guys. Now Dwayne Evans is already fouled. How many fouls you got? Once you got to foul number seven, it was a one and one. 
And after North Carolina State marched to the national championship, and the big key was that people kept missing free throws, that's when they changed the rule. That's when it came in, but on the tenth foul, it was a it was a two shot foul. That was the impetus for that rule. One and one. And after North Carolina State marched to the national championship, and the big key was that people kept missing free throws. So Barnett has fouled out his fifth foul. And the issue now for now Dwayne Evans has already fouled out. Now Barnett will join him on the bench, disqualified. And what I was talking about in 1983, the rule then was no matter how many fouls you got, once you got to foul number seven, it was a one and one. And after North Carolina State marched to the national championship, and the big key was that two people kept missing free throws, that's when they changed the rules. That's when it came in, but on the tenth foul, it was a it was a two shot foul. That was the impetus for that rule change. So the Wolf Pack being bitten by a strategy that they implemented or helped it to help make things that was an illegal. DJ Warren, it's a big one. Tonight, even even if he makes this, what St. Louis can tie with the three. And the three-point shooters, not that they need one right away, but you got Lancona on the floor and Mike McCall, and he is one out of two. Now you can take a three and win. How about this? Clock running. Shot clock is off. See what St. Louis does here. Jets gonna go to the hole. He's fouled out. Count it. Jordan Jet. Jordan has just taken over in the second half. Just uses that strength of his to get down the lane. It's the third personal foul on T.J. Warren. Boy, that's amazing. Now, of course, the question is, St. Louis hasn't shot the ball well from the free throw line, so can he make this free throw to give St. Louis a one-point lead? 18.8 remaining. Foul on Warren is third. Short air jet, 17 points tonight, 16 of those coming in the second half. For the lead, he missed, still tied. Lee, and they're gonna foul, no, timeout, I beg your pardon. Mark Godfrey called the timeout, tie ball game. I've seen, still alive in Orlando. And in eight minutes, they've been able to carve it away. Hack-a-shack was made famous here in Orlando, right? <laughs> this has been hack-a-pack, as in anybody for North Carolina has been fouled just about every possession, and St. Louis is back. All those missed free throws, the turnovers against the press, that's how you lose the 16-point lead. Now, the strategy for North Carolina State, the game is tied. You'd like to hold the ball for the last shot. 16-point lead with eight minutes remaining in regulation. St. Louis has come back. Two seniors have fouled out, Barnett and Evans. There's Lewis with the ball. You gotta keep your eye on T.J. Warren here. The 24 in the red. Down to three, two. Lewis will take it for the win. And out! Oh, man! We are headed for overtime! Halfway down for Tyler Lewis. And we play on in Orlando. I don't blame that Billiken for winking. They have just stolen the final eight minutes of regulation. Lewis had a great look. It doesn't go. But five back on the clock. The NCAA tournament, 70 to 70, as NC State Dan misses 15 free throws in the second half, and the Billikens climb all the way back. Well, the Billikens climbed all the way back in spite of the fact that they had a tough time making free throws. They were only six for 14 in the second half. Overtime records, St. Louis 2-0 during the regular year. NC State went one and one. Evans is fouled out along with Barnett, the two seniors. There's not a whole lot of foul trouble uh, at this point for St. Louis with those two out of the game, Barnett and Evans. And you wonder if they're going to continue to foul in C State. Well, I think if they get behind, they'll foul. 
But no, that they, what they did, that was the strategy to get back in the game, and North Carolina State cooperated by missing the free throws. So they're just not going to foul with the game tied. Yeah, just about everyone to blame. T.J. Warren's got his head down, hand on his knees, awaiting the jump here. Well, Tyler Lewis very, had a great look at it and yeah, just but the, missed. But the whole key there is that Tyler Lewis had the great look at it. St. Louis did a great defensive job preventing T.J. Warren or Ralston Turner from having a great look at it. Not sure what is going on here with Pat Driscoll having a chat with Jim Cruz. Uh, he wants an explanation. Overtime in Orlando, part of the Midwest region. The winner will move on and take on the winner of Louisville and Manhattan. Those two teams waiting patiently for our finale here in Orlando. And Jim Cruz is still having a discussion with the officials. As soon as we get word on what this is about, we will pass it along. Uh, he wanted further explanation. Cruz took over for Rick Majerus last year on an interim basis. Took the Pelicans to the tournament. They won in the round of 64 last year and then lost in the round of 32 to Oregon. And it was shortly thereafter that Cruz took the job. They're trying, to figure out, they're trying to figure out how many timeouts are left. Each team gets an additional timeout in the overtime. Right. Jim Cruz thinks either the Wolfpack don't have two timeouts, that they didn't have any timeouts at the end of regulation, so they should have one now, and up on the board it says they have two. And so I think that's the issue. Lord Godfrey took that late timeout. And the foul situation for St. Louis. Evans and Barnett are out, and then Jet Manning with three apiece. So we're all set now. Everybody has it where they want. NC State foul situation. Vandenberg, who jumped center, has four. And it'll be St. Louis to control. Overtime underway. And St. Louis, their best offense in the second half is to Jordan Jet on the attack. Scored all but one of his points in the second half. Comes up short. There's McBroom with the offensive rebound. Now nine offensive rebounds in the game for St. Louis. Again, Jets, the best part of his game isn't the jump shot. Well, he'll take it. Well, Strong gets Vandenberg. Somehow gets it to go. Vandenberg trying to be careful because he's got those four fouls. And the group took advantage of it. So St. Louis is ahead. Oh, that's hard to, hard to imagine. We're down 16 with eight minutes. That's the first lead for St. Louis since it was nine to six. Now Jordan Jeff is going to take over and try to guard T.J. Warren. In the ACC. We'll see how North Carolina State responds. We're going to get McGroom on the foul. Lewis couldn't get free. It's his third foul. And Lewis will shoot free throws. And this is the last place where North Carolina State has wanted to be in the second half. Lewis a 73% free throw shooter. And hits the first. Well, they needed that just to see one go in after 15 missed foul shots in the second half. Yeah, it's been a tough game for Lewis. He's got six assists, but he's also got six turnovers. Very uncharacteristic kind of night for Tyler Lewis. Hits them both. All tied at 72. Overtime in Orlando. NC State, a big lead. Go away, St. Louis, the five seed, come all the way back. And here's Lowe, and Lowe with an exclamation point. They're just the Billikens back on top. They're just putting the ball down and driving it to the basket. Doesn't matter who. And they have been extremely successful. Ronald Lowe, he was effective outside early in this game. Hit three three-pointers early. Done his work inside in the second half and in overtime. Here's Lee. And Lowe clears it away. St. Louis can add to their lead. They're up two. And here's Chet. Not there. Who's that going to be off of? That is off of St. Louis. And Broom touched in last. And Jet a little shaken up on the floor. Uh, he might have a cramp. There's 
Well, just driving the ball to the basket. Nobody from NC State stepping in trying to stop him. Of course, I don't blame them. Well, is a big guy, but... Jordan Air Jet, you gotta give him a lot of credit. Looked like he was hurting at halftime. He was trying to stretch out. He, he couldn't get loose. Well, he's had the groin injury uh, late in the season. But he's turned on the Jets, no pun intended. 17 points. He's doing a great job battling against TJ Warren. You can understand why Jet is moving a little bit slowly because he has exerted a tremendous amount of energy on the defensive end, and then he's got to turn that around on the offensive end. He's been the team leader in the second half. Now remember, St. Louis's top scorer, Evans, fouled out. Austin Turner. And he misses the first. And even Austin Turner missing free throws, shooting at near 70% for the regular season. And in North Carolina State, it's going to be interesting to see how they play from behind in this overtime. Now they're only behind by one point, but keep in mind, we've already said they blew that 16-point lead because they couldn't make free throws. Now they find themselves behind by a point, and St. Louis has been on the attack. And North Carolina State has had no answer defensively. St. Louis, the two leads they had, one came early, early in the first half. And they've just taken the lead here in overtime. And North Carolina State goes to the zone. There's some three-point shooters out there, Lincoln and McCall. The purpose of the zone is to stop that dribble penetration. Shot clock and eight. Cornelia Jett takes a peek. Cornelia Jett looking for help. Dumps it inside. Rob Lowe, Rob Lowe finishes. He has four in this overtime period. 76-73, the Pelicans by three. That's great patience on the offensive end. 20 for the Kiwi low. And Guthrie calls the timeout. Now it's NC State on the ropes. Let a lead go by. St. Louis up three. Great luck from Jet and Lowe knows what to do with it. In the second half and in overtime. Here's Lee. And Lowe clears it away. St. Louis can add to their lead. They're up two. And here's Chet. Not there. Who's that going to be off of? That is off of St. Louis. Broom tucks in last. And Jet a little shaken up on the floor. And he might have a cramp. There's Lowe just driving the ball to the basket. Nobody from NC State stepping in trying to stop him. Of course, I don't blame the time period. NC State. Bob Lowe now at 20 points. He's been big in this overtime period. NC State. Taking the timeout, they have one left. St. Louis still with two. And we'll pack ball. A critical possession for North Carolina State. T.J. Warren hadn't been able to handle the ball in the overtime. A 37 to 18 run. And there's a steal and a chance for Jet to add to it. He's fouled. Free throws coming up. Well, Mark Gottfried has seen it all slip away here. That's another turnover that will be charged to Tyler Lewis. He's trying to throw the ball to T.J. Warren. Here's Warren coming off the screen, and Warren doesn't come and meet the ball. Warren stands there and waits for the ball to come to him. You've got to step toward the basketball. That allows Jet the opportunity to get in there and make the steal. Lewis with his head down. He's got seven turnovers tonight. As Jordan Jet hits the first. It's a two-possession game for the Billikens. You just get the idea that Jordan Jeff, the senior leader for St. Louis, is just he's refusing to have his career end here. 18 points for Jordan Jeff. All but one of those coming in the second half in overtime. He's one out of two, but it's a four-point St. Louis lead. Under two minutes to go in the first overtime. North Carolina State in desperate need of a basket. Awful free throw shooting by both teams. And the North Carolina State, they were completely discombobulated on the offensive end. Jordan Air Jet not allowing NC State to get the ball in Warren's hands. And now Ralston goes to the floor. And it's a That's timeout, the last one. In Using fouls as a strategy, an improbable comeback by St. Louis. Racing a 16-point deficit, they lead by four here in overtime. Minute and a half to go. Two possession game. Lewis will take it, and Lewis hits it. 
He had a chance to win it at the buzzer in regulation. And now he brings State within a pair. Uh, State has to get a stop. They're back in the man-to-man -man defense. Good pass McCall. Manning strong to the basket. And Manning makes it a two-possession game again. DJ Warren. One minute and Warren fouled. And free throws coming up. Which has not been a good thing for NC State. Yeah, but that's the fourth foul on Jordan Air Jet. Boy, Jordan Vandenberg goes out to try to cover the guard. There's a double team out there. Manning does a nice job just going to the basket. Very poor defensive play by North Carolina State. Jeff with those four fouls, 18 points. Warren, five for 12 from the line. It's 25 tonight. Manning knocks down the first. When Jordan Jet is over on the sideline, he's got his hands on his knees. He's standing right in front of the bench. He's not out of the game, but he is really hurt. This one tough guy, no doubt. Jordan Jet, A-10 player of the year, the senior. Anxious moments here as Warren. That's no good. He walked in. You, if you're the free throw shooter, you have to stay behind the line until the ball hits the rim. And he left before the ball hit the rim. So that's a violation. Everybody on the lane can move when the shooter releases the ball, but the shooter cannot break the free play of the free throw line until the ball hits the rim. And clearly he steps over. That's a good call by the official. And so it is a three-point St. Louis lead. And a foul is going to send low to the line. A very good free throw shooter. And that's four fouls on T.J. Warren. There are the Manhattan College Jaspers awaiting Louisville. And they're catching the end of this one. Hoping for their moment in the sun. Bob Lowe over three from the free throw line. He's 77% free throw, and he knocks down the first. And how big has he been in the overtime? Low, 21 tonight. It's a five in OT, and he knocks that one down. Two free throws. Mom's loving it. North Carolina State needs a basket in a hurry. Five-point game. Just cannot get the ball to T.J. Warren. Got to get a lot of credit to Jet. Here's Desmond Lee. And Lee at the rim. Remember North Carolina State. No timeouts. They need to get a foul. Or a screw. Oh, and there it is. And Warren. And one count the basket. And one for T.J. Warren. And a chance for State to tie it. This game has had more twists and turns than the Sherlock Holmes ball. Man, this is something else. Cruz calls the timeout for St. Louis. T.J. Warren on the line with a chance to tie when we come back. For T.J. Warren, they have a chance to tie it here. They do have the possession arrow. So if you get into it, see, and this is the danger. Players get in the habit. They go down on the floor for a loose ball, and they call timeout. And so once you develop that habit, even though the coach tells you, hey, we don't have any timeouts left, that's a risk for North Carolina State. They don't want to be calling a timeout they don't have. The ball goes down on the floor, and you jump on top of it, you just get tied up. It's your ball. Six out of 13 tonight for T.J. Warren, and his free throw is no good. St. Louis still leads. Well, you've got a foul. Two seconds separating the shot now with the game clock, and did he get a timeout? He did. Rob Lowe wants the timeout. It's the last for St. Louis. Boy, T.J. Warren just got to be sick. Six for 14 from the free throw line tonight for Warren. And, of course, that free throw where they called the violation doesn't count as an attempt, so that's another one that they took away because T.J. Warren stepped over the free throw line. That's a free throw story that the 17 and allowed St. Louis to erase a 16 point deficit in overtime. St. Louis, once they got a tie, got to the extra five. They put the jerseys on. Well, they did a great job attacking the basket. And then Lowe and Lowe's had a big game. Here, right at the end of the shot clock, Jordan Vandenberg just loses sight of him. Jordan Vandenberg loses sight of Manning. And Manning is able to score. 
But again, NC State, they've had the chance to tie the game in overtime, and they have missed free throws and been unable to tie the game. Back in late January, T.J. Warren against Georgia Tech made a jumper with five seconds left in OT to give NC State a two-point win. He's been there late in games. Does he, does he get a chance here tonight? Billikens by a point with the ball. Chance to put it in. Clock ticks. And a great save over there. Warren just fell out of the game. So Lancona with the save and T.J. Warren is DQ'd. Out he goes. Five fouls. NC State's best score is done. 28 points tonight. What a ton of missed free throws that are going to dog it. Tyler Lewis is going to enter the game for T.J. Warren. And so now this is this is interesting. If St. Louis, even if they make both of these free throws, it's still a three-point game, and North Carolina State has a chance to tie with the three. But there's enough time left that you don't need to take the three. But again, this all hinges on the free throw situation, which we just showed you. St. Louis has a 10 for 22 from Long. Now the spotlight shines on the freshman. Tanner He's 75% on the year. And the lefty, cool and calm, he knocks down the first. Two-point Billiken lead. 27.9 remaining in the first OT. Oh, he comes up short. Short on that one. A chance for NC State to tie or take the lead here. Shot clock is off. Desmond Lee goes to the basket. And there's a rebound pulled down by McCall. And the foul. And now St. Louis can make it a two-possession game. Well, NC State had their chance. Desmond Lee right at the rim. This is pretty good defense here by Lowe. Freeman had his hands on the ball, but he couldn't hold it. A nice rebound by McCall. McCall, one of the smallest guys out there for St. Louis. at six feet tall. He's one of their best free throw shooters. Three for four tonight from the line. 76% for the year. McCall misses. Of course he misses. And NC State will still have a shot. To make it a three-point Billiken lead. He's got it. Who takes the shot for NC State? 10.4 left. Here's Barber, the freshman. They need a three. Austin Turner rises up. Turner comes up short. McCall the board. And St. Louis survives and advances. What a comeback for the Billikens. Ryan, I don't know that I've ever seen anything quite like this. They overcome a 16-point deficit, implementing the Hacka, Hacka NC State idea, putting them to the line for all of those late possessions. They win it 83 to 80, and one of the top scorers in college basketball, T.J. Warren, this season comes to an end. Seed hangs on. St. Louis advances. And now they'll await the winner of Louisville and Manhattan. As we send it over to Christine Leahy with Jordan Air Jet. Jordan Air, you look so focused right now. What is going through your mind? Hey, I'm, I'm just happy we won that game, man. We, we never gave up. We just, we just kept fighting and came, came, came along and got the win. You guys were down by 16 points at one point. What was the key to this comeback? Keep fighting, keep fighting, keep getting defensive stops and try to execute on offense. I know you were going through a groin injury all game. How physical and tough was this game for you? I mean, it was tough, but I'm a warrior. I'm going to fight through that. No matter what, I'm going to fight through it. Prior to tonight, you guys had dropped four out of five games. What has been the biggest reason for your turnaround? Uh, I mean, we just got to keep going, man. We can't we can't look at those losses and hang our heads. We've got to learn from them and come back and win. All right, thank you, George Aaron. All right, now we'll bring in Coach. <laughs> Coach, congratulations.
mentioned your team down by 16 points at one point. What were you telling these guys to keep them in the game? Oh, I don't know if I was telling them anything. But I, I thought we got a little sharper when we started to press a little bit. Kind of gave us a little bit of momentum, giving us energies. But our guys just kind of plugged away one, one, uh, one play at a time. And, uh, you know, we made plenty of mistakes. They made plenty of mistakes. It's kind of a mistake for the game, but uh, obviously a hard-fought game. Jordan had an amazing second half. What was it that was able to get him going? <laughs> if I knew that, we'd be in goal. We need that for both halves. But he, he was excellent the first second half. And Warren is an unbelievable player. Next up, Louisville and Manhattan. Will you stay to watch or will you go home? And what are your thoughts on that matchup? No, we'll stay. Uh, I don't know. I don't know much about them except they're good. <laughs> Both things, so uh, we look forward to it. It's exciting. Coach, congratulations. Brian, back over to you. All right, thanks, Christina. The game that featured 31 missed free throws, the most in an NCAA tournament game since 1976. St. Louis moving on. The tournament games continue live now on CBS, TBS, and True TV. Louisville is at Hatton coming up here from Orlando on TNT. After a quick break, we'll send you to our NCAA studio. The Billikens erase a 16-point deficit. They advance to the round of 32.